darkness, the ever-present threat that looms at the heart of every adventure. This can be a very literal, very real darkness in games like Shadow Dark, or this can be something very metaphorical. In some stories, like in Lord of the Rings, darkness is a threat that looms behind the character's choices, behind every step they take on their journeys. But what is darkness in your game? So today, I finally remembered to grab my Mazes book, and we're going to talk about the darkness mechanic in this game. Let's dive in. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. I'm just going to go ahead and apologize for the potential audio kerfuffle because of the wind today. This is my one day to shoot and I can't really do anything about this. Darkness takes many forms at our table, but how prevalent is it in your role-playing games? Maybe you're playing a game like 5e and everyone has dark vision, or some way to deal with the darkness like the light spell. But I want to talk about a way to use this idea of darkness that goes beyond timers and torches. I'm talking about darkness as an ever-present and real threat to the party. So before we can talk about the mechanical benefit of darkness in this book, we have to talk a little bit about mazes. In mazes, you play as one of four possible roles, the paragon, the vanguard, the fighter, or the sentinel. And depending on which role you choose, that decides what dice you roll for everything. Whether that's books, boots, blades, or bones, you are rolling that die. So let's say, for example, you're playing a vanguard. You're the D6. You roll a D6 for books, boots, blades, or bones, and you also roll a d6 whenever you deal damage. Now, because in mazes, you are focused on trying to hit very specific numbers on the die, those are your target numbers for the different kinds of skills. That means there are certain dice that are more naturally able to hit those specific target numbers. Here's the chart represented in the book, just so you can get an idea of what I'm talking about here. There are also two other important resolution mechanics in mazes. If you roll a key, which is the lowest number on your die, or if you roll a crown, the highest number on that die. Now, most of the time, a crown is an auto success, and a key is an auto success based on the background, edges, and things like that that you choose in character creation. However, the crown result in this game is fickle and is ever changing depending on the level of darkness. If things are bright, a crown is an auto success for you, but if things are bleak, that is going to be a failure. So the idea here is that the GM, or as it's called in this game, the maze controller, has a natural dial to turn up or down to change the difficulty in any scenario. This makes darkness a very real presence in your game. Let's take a look at the section in the book that talks about things that can raise the level of darkness. So without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open and see what it says about darkness. Gathering darkness. Throughout the adventure, a party will generate darkness, which is both a resource for the MC and a signpost to the players of how dangerous the current situation has become. You can track darkness with a D12, a play aid, or tokens, but darkness should be visible to all the players. The MC uses the darkness level as an aid to telling the story and as a pacing mechanism. In addition, the MC can spend darkness as fuel for obstacles and monsters. The MC will give the players treasure based on their story. Our rule of thumb is that a maze will contain at least one more potential treasure than the number of adventurers. While the maze controller controls what treasure is possible, darkness is created by the action and activities of the players. I'm just going to read from the list here in the book of some of the reasons you might increase the darkness level. Darkness is generated by the following activities of the players. Finding treasure hazardous encounters, entering the darkness or dungeon, splitting the party, time passing, ignoring danger, or flashbacks. <laughs> no worries. The MC uses the darkness level as an aid to telling the story and as a pacing mechanism. In addition, the MC can spend darkness as fuel for obstacles and monsters. The MC will give the players treasure based on their story our rule of thumb is that mazes will contain at least one more potential treasure than the number of adventurers. 
While the maze controller controls what treasure is possible, darkness is created by the actions and activities of the players. The Rising Darkness Darkness isn't simply a resource. It's a barometer of the danger and a way to provide pacing and control to a story. As the darkness rises, things get harder for the characters. Over the course of a game, it will continue to rise and get more deadly. And right here we have the three different levels of darkness which affect the level of deadliness in the game. Now as I'm reading through this list, one way that you can think of plugging this darkness mechanic into your own games, regardless of what role-playing game you're playing, is thinking of the different levels of darkness as ways to either alter, make the DCs easier or harder, or to add boons and banes to the difficulty of the situation you're in. So the first one is bright, one, two, three. While the darkness is three or less, things look bright. They are fresh, clear, and in relative control. While this is happening, the party's lamps are shining and their bellies are full. While it is bright, the players always succeed when they roll a crown. Things are easy and safe. If things are bright while rolling against death's door, the roll is advantaged. And death's door in mazes is similar to the way that death saving throws work in games like D&D. Torchlit. Things are torchlit while the darkness is under seven. This is the main meat of any adventure. Many adventures will start with the characters in this state. There are no advantages or disadvantages when things are torchlit. When a character rolls their crown, they may spend a star or treasure or make a deal with the maze controller to succeed. In some situations, they may be able to take a narrative concession. This is called a negotiated success. And last but not least, bleak. Seven plus. If the darkness is more than seven, things are bleak. When things are bleak, the characters always lose on a crown roll. The mood is dark, gritty, and scary. If things are bleak while rolling against death's door, the roll is disadvantaged. The wind rises. But this darkness mechanic affects more than just your player's DCs or their ability to succeed on checks. Now there are plenty of TTRPGs out there where there's sort of a meta currency that gets traded maybe between the players and the GM. But in mazes, darkness functions as a pacing mechanic, a threat level, and it fuels abilities of monsters, traps, and random encounters. And while we're here, I just wanna say that having a physical D12 or an oversized die sitting on the corner of Whoa. While we're here, I wanna note that having an oversized die like a D12 sitting on the corner of your table and you're having your players watch it slowly tick up as you raise the darkness is a great way to telegraph that they're getting in too deep. Some role-playing games suffer from a lack of information between the GM and the players. This darkness represents a very natural mechanic to be able to tell your players when things are heating up and when they need to pull out of that dungeon or scene. Before you tell the players anything, they will already be afraid of the darkness. But what can the maze controller do with darkness? The first thing that you can do is to let it accumulate to create a negative situation for the party. The other use is to fuel the actions of your obstacles, traps, and monsters populating the maze. Mostly, you will spend darkness just as the characters spend stars and treasure. These darkness spins are a way of creating custom actions within a maze without creating additional rules to handle every occasion as well as being perceived as a fairer way to run the game. When you spin darkness for player-facing activities, it accomplishes three positive goals. One, it signals to the players that they are succeeding because you have to spend a resource to stop them. Two, it helps to reinforce the idea that darkness is something they should fear. And finally, even though you are throwing gas on the torches and shooting poison darts at them, it feels fairer than just an outright, because I said so. Remember, Whenever you introduce a hazard to the players, take a darkness. The rest of the darkness will be generated by the characters getting themselves into tight spots. Use the darkness as a guide to what happens in a scene, but also use it to power your hazards. You can spend a darkness to affect the world of the players outside of hazards as well. When the chips are down against the bad guys, you can spend a darkness to refill a hazard's hearts. This will allow you to keep an interesting encounter going even when the party slaughters everything that it sees. You can spend darkness on your hazards the way that the players spin stars to let you do things like cast a spell, escape deus ex machina style, do additional damage, avoid things the players have done, etc. Darkness spins. 
When creating a maze module, it is helpful to think of some things that you want to spin darkness on. This list is called darkness spins that could feature things like wandering monsters, special actions for a boss monster or a lieutenant, trap ideas, etc. Wandering monsters. When creating a maze module, there may be optional encounters, wandering monsters, guard patrols, etc. that you want to include but may not always use. In old school games, it was normal to include random tables for these to exist. But in mazes, you spin darkness to summon these optional monsters into play. Watch out, you can spin a darkness to create a hazard like a trap, locked door, or other complication. Tell the players that you are spinning a darkness. It is your choice whether or not you tell them what for. Doing this should always result in something that the players have to resolve in order to go on. Unlocking a door, finding a way across a chasm that suddenly appears, trying not to set off the clockwork bomb, etc. Maze Controller's Fiat Sometimes you just need something to happen to keep a story going. You can spend a darkness, similar to players giving you a darkness for a flashback, for a fiat. When you do this, you might be hand-waving something out of character, but paying a cost to do so, using flashbacks to build the world. During the game, the players and the MC can insert new information into the story via a flashback. When an MC does this, they spend a darkness. When the players do it, they generate a darkness. If you're having inspiration in the moment, this is a nice way to spend a sort of meta currency that doesn't feel like you're just taking one out on the players. I really love this as an abstract way to handle GM fiat. It just gives you a sense that the GM isn't out to get you and they're having to spend a resource in order to do these things. And just to give some context here, that's because one of the bits of advice in mazes is to just throw the players directly into the action or the maze or dungeon whatever the scene is. So flashbacks are a nice way for your players to be able to insert some narrative into that scene when they're already there. I could keep going, but I'm gonna stop right here because there's a lot more to darkness that relates specifically to mazes. And I want this to be a more general video about things that are really cool from mazes that you could take and put into your game and just to highlight that darkness mechanic. Okay, well, this video is already getting long. I don't know if any of this audio is even gonna be usable and I've gotta go. So that's probably it for me today. I got to get out of here before the wind blows a tree down on my head. Thanks for watching. If you like what I do, please like and subscribe. Leave a comment about a way that you think darkness could be used in your game. Or, hey, if you're out there playing mazes, let me know about it. I want to hear about your mazes game. If you like the sound of mazes, go check out Ninth Level Games. They've got some really great and innovative TTRPGs and some really interesting things going on. Again, I'm not sponsored in any way. I just really like this book. Thanks for watching, and as always, make mistakes, choose chaos, and bring a torch. Have fun. Well, back to basics, let's get down to brass tacks and start rolling the dice. We need some practical facts, no more theory crafting. Or lofty abstracts I need a concrete solution A foregone conclusion Back to basics We're back to basics We're back to basics We're back to basics